There are so many people who who think they they can they can live without the art or without going to th cinemas or to theaters or to concerts because they think it's all not necessary. But um, they're all getting the hang of it that you need it for socializing. You know, it's it's not it's not only that you that you can sit at home and watch movies um, that still or that already exist, but you kind of at at one point know that there are artists behind it that made that possible and that made you not completely driving insane during all the lockdowns. So I think those and the social workers, they definitely need um, um, to, to get heard. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of The Yellow Van Stories, your interview podcast taking you across the globe in a yellow French camper van by the name of Fonzie. I'm your host and driver, Bastian. Every week, I invite creatives from all over the world into the van to explore with them the opportunities hidden within a crisis and, more generally, what life is like in their part of our globe. Last week I announced that we would be dedicating the entire month of April to Myanmar and an initiative that supports the current democratic struggle there. Unfortunately, with more and more terrible news reaching us every day, it has proven impossible to keep to a schedule. But please note that this is only a slight postponement while we continue setting up in the background. The brave people of Myanmar need all the support they can get and we intend to do what we can in that respect. In the meantime, as difficult as this transition is, we will be traveling in my neighborhood. Fonzie's in first gear already and we are good to go. So buckle up, because today we're picking up a very special guest in Stuttgart in Germany. Here with us in the yellow van today is uh, Claudia Hector, camera assistant and camera woman from Stuttgart, f from Stuttgart, from <laughs> Stuttgart in Germany, and most importantly, my sister. And I'm so happy to have you here. Hi, Claudia. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Nice having, um, being with you. <laughs> <laughs> nice having me, right? Yes. <laughs> Thanks. That's very yeah. kind. It's so nice that uh, that you're here with me today. I have to, and I think uh, a lot of people might also wonder, I have to say this uh, in advance because I announced that uh, we would have an episode on Myanmar the whole month, uh, this month, um, because, but it's it's a very difficult, the situation is very difficult to uh, keep, keep um, it keeps changing uh, daily. So we had to postpone it uh, for the moment a little bit. And you decided to jump in, and I am actually very happy because I wanted to do this with you anyway for quite some time. And now uh, it's happening a little sooner than expected, but it's happening, and I'm so so happy that you uh, were available uh, today to talk yeah, to me a little bit. Yeah, you're actually very lucky <laughs> because I'm right in between two project projects, and um, I'm very busy at the moment. <laughs> and, and and I feel very lucky, and now I feel even even luckier, like much much yeah. luckier even. <laughs> so uh, so I'm I'm so glad that you uh, you the, the family ties were strong enough to to bring you on the show today. Uh, so I could wonderful. arrange a few hours for you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. When Busty calls. Yeah. You know, um, so uh, let's 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 start with the most important question, as usual. Uh, what drink did you pour yourself? What do you drink? Um, I I thought about um, you, and I know you like gin tonic, so I poured myself a gin tonic for you. I Get actually don't drink it a lot, town. but that's exactly what I poured as well. Yes, look, I know you, so I thought I'm just gonna have a gin tonic with you. I'm so predictable. <laughs> wow, but I, I don't. I, I'm out of lemon, so I just poured a little bit of lemon juice in it and some self-made grenadine syrup oh that that sounds very yeah. good though um, i just I, tried I, it I, I didn't have lemons <laughs> either so i i had well that speaks <laughs> for creativity obviously you know yeah. not that i'm surprised you know this is just <laughs> yeah, something sure. that yeah. uh, doesn't surprise me at all uh but uh, i also have a gin tonic because you know usually i mean 
you are, I think, one of the three people that follow this podcast regularly, right? Thank you very much for that, by yeah, the way. Uh, you uh, it's you, it's you, <laughs> it's you, mom, and uh, and and Gerasimos and Inq. Okay. Uh, thanks, guys, by the way, for tuning in regularly. Um, and uh, big shout out. And uh, so uh, I uh, usually try and pour a drink that has some sort of local flavor of whoever I'm talking to. But since we're both um, German and I, I decided not and Stuttgart's from, not too far away <laughs> from Munich. Uh. We, I thought I'd just go for a regular gin tonic and I poured it uh, over a little bit of grapefruit. That's my preferred way of drinking it. Ah, it's, I don't uh, have a grapefruit here either. So. <laughs> well, I happen to have a grapefruit. So I was like, I'm all in. I poured yeah, it. That's good. And, uh, and yeah. So cheers. Cheers. To, uh, to uh, our ride in the yellow van. I'm so happy. Yes. I haven't been in the yellow van for ages, so. <laughs> I know because it's parked in Greece, right? It's not really right around the corner. So that might have yeah. something to do with it. Um, I also, where are you right now? That's what I would like to know. Because you say you're I'm, in between two projects. So right now, where are yeah. you? At the moment, I'm at home in Stuttgart um, on my couch. I like that couch because it's very big and very comfortable. And so I decided it looks very, to very stay nice, here. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah. That's and, very nice. Uh, yeah. So what if you had to pick your favorite thing in that room, what would that be? Of course, I thought about it already before. <laughs> of course and, you did because um, you came prepared. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> And um, I actually thought about my guitar that's hanging on my wall. But um, then I decided it's not the guitar on the wall. It's um, it's a lamp. It's in the shape of a telephone. And it's yellow. And I, we picked it up on the flea market once a few years ago. And I really, really like that lamp. Great, I'll show you. All right. At least you can see it. Yeah, show me. Little. I will describe it. I will describe it. It is, uh, <laughs> it, it, right now it, it, it looks a little overexposed. So it's, uh, it's, it's mainly a big yellow glare of light, but, but I can see that that's kind of like a, a phone. I will have to yeah. come and look at it f for real once because, yes, like we should. just realized, I haven't visited yeah. you in Stuttgart yet and I am just terrible. I am, <laughs> what can I say? Yeah. Well, it's, you're busy. I'm busy, you know. Happens it's, all the it's, time. It's on my bucket list, just so you know. <laughs> it really is on my oh, bucket awesome. list. Yeah. <laughs> but sorry, before that, we're still skydiving, going to India. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah um, there's there's a bunch of other things, but you, I think you did position 32 <laughs> or something like that. Oh, I mean, that's really, at least under the top 50, you know. So yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's, I mean, isn't that <laughs> well? That's better Maybe than top 100. Maybe I can arrange you know? some time just, um, just for you someday. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> we'll figure something out. I will like well, maybe yeah. when I come back from India, I can just yeah, give you a call. Yeah, maybe that's a good idea. And then we set it all up. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, just I, I, give just me a call. Came to you know, me. maybe it just came to me. I moved out um, then or uh, something. But yeah, just give me a call then. Or maybe you will move to India. Who knows? <laughs> and then you. I can just come yeah. and visit you there and just <laughs> you know, just two <laughs> things. Two birds, one stone. Awesome. Anyway, we Sounds will see. Sounds great. I was uh, always I am... thinking about India. <laughs> Moving there. Yeah. Once. Me too. Yeah. Wow. That's, <laughs> wow. Yeah, me too. Yeah, so much for of carbon busting. A couple of months. <laughs> 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 I know. We could almost be related. Just a few weeks. <laughs> so, I mean, first you guessed my drink right. So I'm, I'm, I'm apparently very predictable, but uh, you, I mean, you have been, you've had to hang out with me quite a bit growing up. Yes. So I think that yeah. might have something to do with it as well. More than bit. I wanted normally. Um, poor you. <laughs> poor you, by the way. I mean, poor that you. That was always great with you. But you were a very good older brother. Yeah. Oh, stop it now. I have to stop say it. that. Okay, course, fine. But okay, you can yeah. say it. A little more <laughs> but then, stop it now. Okay, fine. <laughs> let's, let's stop it there. Okay. Um, <laughs> but thank you. But thank you very much. Uh, so that's, You know, usually because you know, right? I don't have to really take uh, take you through it or talk you through it. I will just read a quick, short little introduction to uh, also point out that you're not just my my sister. <laughs> you you do other stuff well, as well. You're not yeah. uh, my sister full time. No, you are actually, but it's not your full time yes. profession. It's more like something <laughs> I don't earn money that you couldn't that, choose. Actually. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you should though. You should a lot. I Just, think so too. Yeah. I, I think you should. I think so. You should. Yeah. You should get yeah, a lot of a money lot for that. Of money. Yeah. Uh, but sorry, it's not in my hands, really. 
because I got none, so there's nothing I can do. Yeah, no, I got more than you. <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> probably. <laughs> <laughs> Most probably. I think it's, it's, it's safe to say. So, I was going to... No, I'm still going to. I'm going to read the uh, your introduction. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, after what you just said, I will not read that introduction anymore. Sorry. Um, <laughs> of course, I'll read that introduction. Yeah. And uh, and then we'll take it from there because I have a lot of questions for you, film-related, okay. of course, as well. Awesome. Because uh, I think uh, there are some really, really interesting things that you could help me and help everybody figure out. I hope I think, so. Or give you your sure. perspective on that. <laughs> so here's your little introduction. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Claudia is a camera assistant from Munich in Germany, now currently residing in Stuttgart, maybe soon in India. Who knows? <laughs> and above all, she is my baby sister. And I say baby sister in the most lovable way because uh, it's not that you're my baby sister. You are a grown woman and everything. But for me, you will always be, to me, you'll always be my baby sister. For close to 10 years now, Claudia has been honing her craft in film and cinema, steadily rising up in the camera ranks. Her passion and joy are absolutely infectious, despite the obvious stigma of this particular adjective of late. She has been a part of many big German film and TV productions, working with some of the finest German actors, directors, and camera operators. And I'm extremely proud of her, and I couldn't be happier to have her on board today to discuss with her the challenges cinema is facing during the pandemic, and also what it is like to be a woman in a still largely male-dominated field. So welcome to the Yellow Van, Claudi, once again. Thank you. <laughs> well, don't mention Very it. Honored. <laughs> Glad you are here. So I would like to know, you said you are in between two projects, right? Yes. So which project have you just finished? What were you working on? I was working on a movie for the cinemas um, here in, uh, close around Stuttgart, actually, in a, in a little uh, village. Um, it's a drama about um, a woman coming home to her um, to her family or to the place where she grew up where a lot of things happened and um i don't want to tell too much because i think the story kind of um explains it during seeing it and i think um if i would say anything now i would spoil it for a lot of people <laughs> at least the german people right. listening fair enough so yeah It's called Coming Home, yeah. and um, it was a um, very um, five exhausting weeks, but um, also very interesting and very intense, and um, I learned a lot still, <laughs> and it was, um, yeah, and uh, nice. but I'm still glad it's over, and I could find a little time to sleep, <laughs> and um, yeah, after Yes, it was long, Easter, right? How long, how long were you on the set for now? Uh, five weeks. We were um, mainly shooting oh, five um, in a village, yeah. and but we stayed there mm -hmm. during the week, and I just came home on weekends to wash my clothes <laughs> and sleep, of course, a little bit. Uh, very, <laughs> very understandable. Yes, yeah. yeah. So for five days you didn't sleep, and then you had a weekend to catch up on sleep. Is that yeah. kind of how it works? <laughs> kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. you worked twenty 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 four <laughs> five hours, straight. and then yeah. you had the weekend. <laughs> okay, wow. You film yeah. people. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. Yeah. Amazing resources. That's why we get so old so wow. fast. You Impressive. Know? We, we look like, I'm, I look like 60. I'm actually just 30, but, you know. <laughs> it's, yeah. Ah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, that, well, <laughs> I, I think you don't look old at all. Because no, thank you. Yeah. that it's would make me look even of my older, mom. I think. Yes. <laughs> of our mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the genetics. <laughs> and dad. Sorry. And dad. Uh, of course. Dad, dad as dad well. <laughs> we love you, dad. Yes. Okay. So, because the other day when I spoke about the camping with Shao, he, I got some, I got some, 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 some feedback from him. Okay. And uh. So I'm, I'm just a little more careful. Yes. Okay. No, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so that was the one. What's the next one? The next uh, project you're working on? The next project I'm working on is going to be a love movie in black and white Ooh. and we gonna shoot oh, that, that sounds thing. super interesting yeah it's very interesting it's um either the cameraman who's cinema or tv um i'm not sure yet i don't have a lot of information because they're kind of having their first film project at the moment so um <laughs> there are a lot of okay. people who do that for the first time 
And um, so it's Great. a little bit chaotic. The information flow doesn't work properly. <laughs> But at least they need a focus puller, and that's me. <laughs> and um, yeah, so, all right. Yeah, but I is it an, ac an academy film then, like a film no. academy film? No, it's actually from um, um, an artist, um, um, a musician. The he's called, mm -hmm. um, or the band is called Captain Peng. I don't know. It's um, it's a German band. All they right. Do some, yes. Oh, I will link to that because Captain <laughs> Peng is that. just, I am such a fan. I am such a fan. Some of the yeah. best rhymes, sorry for all English speaking listeners, it will be difficult, <laughs> but he is just the lyric, the, 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 the rhymes, the lyrics, the music, the videos, the videos he made. They're nice videos. It, yeah. They're just amazing. So big shout out. I, I, I love, uh, his, their work. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. So that should be fun. So because yes. when you say they're doing it for the first time, obviously they have a lot of uh, video and film experience, but it's their first sure. feature film then, I suppose. It's their first long long movie, yeah. more or less, yeah. So oh, that sounds gonna, super exciting. Yeah. Can't wait to to see what uh, comes out at the end. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess everybody. Yeah. <laughs> That's what no, film is all about, are, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's uh, it's cool. Um, the the DOP, the, um, the cameraman, he's... Um, um, I've worked with him before. He got me on that um, on that project actually, and he makes really nice um, pictures. So you can um, mm. he's he's I like him very much uh, and his work. So what's his name? I think it's gonna be Fabian Gamper. He's actually from Fabian Switzerland. Gamper. Big shout out yeah. to Fabian Gamper. Yeah, right. And, I will link um, to him as well so that yeah, <laughs> so that it was it's worth it for him to be mentioned as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but so, so yeah uh, th that that sounds very exciting very yeah. exciting uh, and the, the so best now side that you are working actually, yeah sorry yes the best side on it is actually the project is not going to be shooting in germany it's going to shoot in sicily we, we're going to stay in palermo for for a month so that's oh, kind that's, of nice that's <laughs> not too shabby no not too shabby I think a bit we, of we sun stay in the villa sea. so <laughs> oh nice it's, it's going to be okay nice i think <laughs> that that I, I think that's gonna be okay. I, I feel I don't have to worry about you too much anymore. I think mm -mm. I think you've got to be you've got to be in good hands there. I think so too. <laughs> okay. Uh so now that you are because you know, right at the beginning, this is interesting to me because in the beginning obviously everything shut down when we had the first shutdown like almost a year ago. Uh, also film sets were closed and everything. Uh, how is it now? What are the biggest challenges you guys are facing on a film set uh, nowadays during lockdown and pandemic? Um, it took a while for for the film industry to to get feet on it again on the ground to um, know what to do and what to look after. But um, I think the film industry is also one of the industries that are very fast in adapting. So um, mm. we last year there was already. Um, um, people getting to be like a hygiene consultant. You could like have workshops mm -hmm. where you afterwards um, have the certificate of a hygiene consultant. So you had a, you were on a project and there was al always one person just looking that everybody wears a mask, that um, there's every um, test that is affordable at what time it is affordable, that everybody's getting tested, um, that there's a lot of um, possibilities to wash their hands or to um, to get some fresh air into the sets and stuff like that. So I think um, the film industry is very, very fast in it. And very quick in adapting. And um, this, the last shoot now, we like, of course, not everybody likes it a lot, but there was always like after an hour or, or two, they said like, okay, everybody has to go outside from the set. So the set can can have get fresh air and um, everybody can get in there again after we had like 10 minutes break. And of course, um, it's time that gets lost because um, we all work long hours, but... Um, I think it's good because I think sometimes you actually need that. And maybe the the slowing down things sometimes is better than hurrying everything through. So I think that's actually a good good thing that happened. <laughs> yes. 
And I think you have obviously the advantage also that other art forms have a live audience and a film set is not with a live audience. So I think that makes no. a lot of things a little, a little easier. Yeah. Right. You don't have the press anymore that comes to make pictures, you know, or other people that yeah. interrupt um, a set. And that's probably also very good because before that, you always had people that come and stare and want to see and people get their friends by. And so that's all interrupting. And that's not possible anymore because everybody has to get tested beforehand. And um, of course, there were scenes um, rewritten where you don't have a lot of um, extras on the set. So you don't have just too many people there. But still, um, there are a lot of possibilities, I think. Um, and obviously... I, I believe it also depends on the scenes, right? I mean, you said uh, the next project is a love film. Uh, yeah. I would imagine that a love film needs to show some physical closeness, at least to some degree, right? Yeah. But if everybody is tested, uh, and then most probably on a regular basis, right? Probably every yeah. three days, two days. How does it work? Do you know? Yeah. Um, on the last set, we, um, we were tested uh, uh, two times a week. So it was always um, Mondays and Thursdays. And um, at this set, because we are very isolated um, in, in Sicily, in this villa, we stay and shoot. And mm -hmm. we are not a lot of people. So I think it's kind of a really isolated area and, yeah. and place. So when we get tested regularly once a week or twice a week, I think there's going to be no problem. So you're not just in the villa because it's super nice there, which we're sure it is and all hope it is, but also because it is most probably also part of the, the hygiene concept, uh, right? Probably, so yeah. there's a bit of an isolation. Okay. Yeah. Um, but you also said that it slows things down a little bit. So now the production usually takes a little longer uh, for a film, for a, for, a, for a movie? No, I think it just... You get just a work bit faster. Over time. <laughs> 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 you just do everything. You take more breaks, but when you work, you work faster. You know? Okay. Exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. People just I guess. talk on fast speed, you know, mm. fast mm. forward. So <laughs> you can yes. get it in there. Sorry. If, if you don't if you don't hit a hundred words a minute, you're off the set. That's that's part of the hygiene concept. I'm sorry. I am not making this shit up. You yeah. know? No, so, it's really it's, it's yeah. just the thing, yeah. Okay. No, I'm, I'm actually not um, because I'm not in the in the whole production organizing things beforehand. So I don't know if they got the extra extra days they didn't have before. I just know like um, a normal film set has twenty one to twenty five um, shooting days. So in, this is kind of the thing where you where you shoot the film, and um, and if it's twenty one. And now gets 23 days or 25 days. I don't know because mostly I'm on the project when they just tell me how much days they have. So that's like, um, okay. Yeah. Fine. Uh, but Fine. We, probably, don't, we don't need I, to get that yeah. much into detail anyway. Yeah. I think maybe they get an extra yeah. day okay. or well, two. We, yeah. Yeah. We got, we got, <laughs> we got the picture a little bit at least that it has yeah. changed slightly and, um, yeah. do you, do you think that this is something that it will be, I mean, if we venture out to say that one day uh, this will all be behind us, right? It it feels yeah. like that moment has been postponed and postponed and postponed. Uh, but uh, when all of this is over um, and everything is back to normal again, uh, do you think there's anything that will change for the better uh, through this? Or will it just like anything that you can take away from this for the future of filmmaking in, in a sense? Or is it really just something that will just be adapted as long as the pandemic lasts? Um, I'm, I'm not sure, actually. I, for myself, I know that um, I changed um, thinking about my work um, a little because um, I love my work. Uh, I, I'm I'm really really happy being on the film set and making my job. But I recognize like during the last we uh, last year, um, that's also really really nice having the time in between for yourself. Like just um, coming back, relax, take some projects that you don't do otherwise or. Even be creative in the work, you know, like, um, I, I, I like crafted my own, um, 
um, power box where I can just put in my, my whole battery charges and stuff. And um, that's like things that you have in your mind that you would like to have that and then you don't do it. So now you have more time in between that project. So you, you have the time to do it and can be creative in another way. And it's actually, I like that. And I try to uh, think about having this balance um, further on, like even when you can work normally again, like, yeah. I just think right. um, like, this is actually, yeah. I hear that a lot. Yeah. I hear that a lot from a lot of people that this is it. It changed the perspective in the sense what is what is good for me uh, for a lot of people. I, I this is really one very common answer. Not to say that you are you are common in that sense, but it's, I, I think it's <laughs> something that everybody can can get behind. That it's like a regrounding uh, of, yeah. of is is happening as well. Uh, at the same time, obviously, also I have to qualify it in the sense also that it's ob this is obviously a, a luxury that not everybody has, right? I mean, sure. some people don't have this luxury. This is also a sign of of a certain kind of uh, you know privileged position. But um, if yeah. you can do that, uh, that's that's great. That's wonderful. There's actually like um, there's um, um, uh, how do you say it in English uh, Gewerkschaft? A labor um, union or a union. Yeah, a union. Yeah. Um, that is actually, I think that they got a little bit stronger now or the, or the things they want is got a little bit stronger. The community um, is big to achieve things like, because we have like, when we work, um, our working days are always 10 hours plus. So um, that's what you like when you want to, when you, when you uh, talk to the producer, you always talk about the 10 hour day. And the union actually was trying to, to change that. So you don't have the 10 hour day anymore, but more like a eight hour day, or at least you have the weekends off so that the, that the working in the film industry gets a little better for families. Because I think that's mm -hmm. kind of also the people, um, found out that it's not, it's not worth it working your ass off. Um, when, when at the end you don't have anything off it. So. Um, that's kind of things that get strong at the moment. Mm -hmm. That's that's a very positive effect, at least yeah. uh, I think, because I know uh, film sets they can be very demanding. Uh, also, from my own personal experience, they can be very demanding, and to to accommodate family and and a film altogether, that can be very hard. So, if there is yeah. um, some some recalibration there, I think that that can be very positive. Yeah. I think so too. Um, I would like to move on with you to to women in cinema. I think that's a very yes. very interesting topic. <laughs> um, and I will I will confront you with the following sentence. Right? Okay. Film and especially camera is still a very male dominated area. Uh, would you agree with that? Yes. I would. <laughs> Good talk. You want to hear more? <laughs> <laughs> See, this is this is this is interview one hundred one. Don't ask closed questions, right? So, yes. No, thanks. That answers the question. Thank you very much. Moving on. Well, um, yes. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> um, I have to admit, uh, I don't know the exact percentage now of camera operators, uh, male and, and female, but. Uh, I think it is, it but it is a large discrepancy, right, between male and female. It, it gets operators. less, but still, um, I don't. I have that impression uh, too. I yeah. do. Yes, you you like see a lot, a lot more talented yeah. filmmakers, female filmmakers. That's yeah. amazing. Like Camera at least operators. in the international wide um, area, you you can see a lot of more coming up. Um, But yes, um, still there's this. Um, I think it's getting less, but I think there's still um, still some difference between male and female operators, or at least in the camera department and the grip department and the light department. Like everything where you kind of have hard work there, and there are always old people who <laughs> who look for for their team. It's gonna be kind of um, they, you know. I had a lot of people are telling me like, yeah, but you cannot um, um, have a lot of equipment or you cannot carry as heavy as, as men do. So 
I didn't get a job because of that. Um, or because, um, they tell you, you have the, um, you, I don't know. <laughs> It's again something I don't know in English. Um, Gebärmutterabsenkung. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> That's like, uh, uh, a uterus, uh, Low, lowering of the uterus, lowering, I would yeah. say. Uh, so yes. Yeah, that's why so that, that, people so tell what, you. That because they're worried about your uterus, that's why. Yes, okay. because when women carry too heavy, it can happen that the uterus lowers or kind of, yeah, you can say it like that. And um, that's not very good, <laughs> of course. It doesn't And, sound very um, good. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not really. you cannot get any kids anymore if if that happens. Uh, well, I was assuming that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, that's kind of also the excuse for men sometimes. Like, yeah, no, I cannot because you cannot carry that much. So because of your uterus, but you've really you have heard to be heard careful. That, like a lot of times. Yes. <laughs> I ha I heard that especially from one person I had to work uh, a while with, and he kept on saying that. On the other side, he also said like. Why can't you carry that alone? You have to carry that alone. It's part of your job description. I'm like, damn, man, that's like 20 kilos of weights. And and you just want me to lift them in the alone with the whole shit there. Like, and then the other thing that's really, really not so heavy, um, you want to have it and and carry it your own uh, alone. So that's kind of some people are just very old school and that's why they, they think women cannot handle that uh, amount of things that men can handle. But to be honest, I think nobody should carry um, a big lamp on its own, uh, on, on their own. They should always carry it together. It's always like, it doesn't matter if you're a woman or a man, you should always protect your back and, uh, and your muscles. So, yeah. I absolutely agree with you. Yes, I absolutely agree with you. So in that sense, if you look at it that way, it would be just actually positive for women to be there because then it it you will just be maybe more mindful even of not carrying the heavy stuff on your own. That goes maybe, yeah. for men as well as for women because it's for neither of them it is necessarily very very healthy. Even if you can maybe carry 20 kilograms on your own, it's still not going to be very healthy and good for your back if you do that for 20, 30 years. So yeah, exactly. uh, I think um, I call bullshit on that. Yeah, Just saying. me too. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> um, But there's like, there are a lot of um, second ACs nowadays, like cam second assistant ca camera assistants. That's kind of um, the people who um, are my assistant. I'm the assistant of the cameraman. They are my assistant, more or less. You can like, if you, if you look at the hierarchy, that's kind of the, the thing, but normally we're just one team, mm. but there are a lot of more women nowadays than, than before. And I think the first ACs, uh, focus puller got more as well. And now it's just the, the jump to get female operators and DOPs. And I think the, the more, um, responsibility you have, the less females you get because there are just a few that don't trust um, a female um, being responsible of how the picture should look like. <laughs> But yeah, I think so that's there's dangerous. still a lot of reservations. Sometimes, there's still a lot yeah. of reservations. But and you say though that it is changing. And to be honest with you, I, I if I look at it now and it's always difficult right because we're also part of uh in our bubble i'm in my bubble and i i try to get out of it and leave it as open as i can but you know i'm i'm as uh, imperfect as everybody else so i do not know all my blind spots but at least it is my my impression as well that there are more female camera operators uh, more female directors as well Uh, that do incredible work. And I feel there's a lot of stuff happening there. There's definitely something rising up, which I think yeah. is absolutely fantastic. Now, would you say that is because of 
women just really also discovering that more and more as a domain that they would that they would that they appreciate that they love that they are appreciating filmmaking more is it is it a societal thing also that there is a greater awareness for that to happen or is it also that film sets and film productions pay more attention to that and offer a little more support? Or is it maybe something, all the three things combined or something I didn't even think of? Why do you think it is? That's actually the bottom line of the question. I think that um, the, I think that women are more aware of what they can achieve and what they want to achieve than before. Like, because, um, you know, like when you go to the 70s, um, people, women were always told that they shouldn't do it or that they belong to the house and, and the um, man gets the money in. And I think it took um, quite a while for women to evolve and, and to change and or to think differently and say, okay, you know, I can do that. And of course, in the 70s, and there, there were a few women that already thought that, but there were a lot of uh, women that didn't even think about it or didn't want to think about it. And I think that they're just at the moment um, taking back what's rightfully theirs, you know? So I think um, this and that there are a lot of more men out there except, um, as well that just um, don't care anymore, you know? Like they they don't want to be the, the the male part or they don't want to be the, the stronger part. They are supporting women because they think, of course, they can do that and they have a nice and other opinion maybe and that's also doing good, you know? So I think it's kind of a thing of everything that um, that's just now maybe the time for, for a change and everybody sees that there's time for a change or should be a change. Yes. Um I I believe that that's obvious I, to me at least. I, I see a lot of uh, female camera work, for instance. I'm I'm trying to think of this. Uh, I I just saw this German. I can't think of the name now. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, not having to say that and stretch that because that's and what I'm doing now is actually almost positively discriminating. But, but I, I think there is there is something. What I'm trying to say, I think, is that there is something in how women uh, make pictures that is absolutely very poetic and and beautiful, and can also be everything else that uh, that a man also does. Right? It can also right. it it has all different aspects and like everything it will just be our pictures will just be richer the more people with the more perspectives we have the more diverse the more uh, inclusive the more the bigger our our creative space will be so and this is what i'm seeing and this is why films are also becoming so i think f films are becoming very rich and very very they develop also very specific views very specific uh, focal points i think also a little more than than in the past and i think that's also a little thanks to that i might just be imagining that but i i believe i believe to some degree that is that is the point how how do you see that i think like i think that if i for example if i if if i look at my job mm -hmm. my job at at set is i'm i'm pulling the focus i'm i'm deciding where the where the focus is in the, in the, in the whole picture. So of course I'm, I'm mostly not deciding this on my own. I'm talking to the DOP or to the director or to both. And then we decide where, where we want to have the focus. If it's in the, if the, in the um, back of the door when the person comes in, or if it's in the front where the, where the guy sits. And, um, but still, I think the, my perspective or the way I see things are different than the way men see it or probably not all men, but I think that women often go there in a more intuitive way or they have a different feeling. Maybe men often do it very technical. And I think um, we women mostly not having the technical part as the, as our primary thing it's more like the second thing 
<laughs> so yes, yes, I think it's. Uh, I think I think also that doesn't that doesn't go all the time. That's you know you you also find sure. uh, women that are technically absolutely amazing. Of course. Of so course. Uh, just also to make sure, and you know that of course. But in in my in my long experience, long experience. I mean, okay, fine. In some <laughs> in some of the stuff that I've done, I've I've gained a little bit of experience, right? Um, I. I, I I think to some degree, and and I'm I'm really very I find it difficult to make generalizations, but I will venture out and make one. This is a generalization, a very conscious generalization, right? So there will be many exceptions, and if you are an exception, don't take any of what I'm saying now at face value. But if you if I if I take if I take uh, my experience over the over the years, I do believe males and and male camera operators also photographers they are very much focused also on the technical uh, aspect of photography and filmmaking it is for them it is absolutely part of that and they want to excel at that very much i have also met uh, and that's almost always the case that's almost always the case i hardly ever meet a man that uh, is like yeah technology te all of that I, it doesn't interest me uh, there is an affinity males and and technology that's that's there for whatever reason right and like i said there's exceptions many exceptions and so on and so on um i have met uh, women photographers and camera operators that are amazing also uh, technically but to a, a much larger degree, also I have met women that were not so much interested in the in the technical aspect of filming or photography, and that has always been reason for guys to go, "Ah, oh, my God! I mean, you don't even you're not even sure exactly what dive what what aperture you're using, right?" Um, and 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 then I'm like, "But that's not really what it's all about, anyway." You can get people that are you know well aware of what the technical aspects are, how to you know, how to sure. rig the camera, how to do all of this. In the end, it's all about the picture. It's all about the picture. If you know someone that can set up the camera, rig the camera for you, just the way that you feel comfortable operating it, it doesn't matter if you are technically the best, if you know exactly where everything goes. It doesn't matter as long as you know how to tell a story and speak with the camera and too long, uh, like I said, males have used that to discredit women and their ability to make films or take decent pictures. And I am very happy to see that changing because that also means that we will focus a lot more on the content of a picture more than how we take that picture. And that, at the end of the day, is always the much more important thing. Um, yeah. Yes. Uh, there was no question in that. I'm aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, of course, already, um, I also had DOPs that don't care about the technical stuff. They're really just there and, and looking at the at, at the picture or how they want to have it. And have me, for example, who puts all the camera settings and um, making all the accessories on the camera that they need to 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 look the, at the right picture i had that several times already with men too so um they are that's good too <laughs> but they are also that's that's the ones, good that's good <laughs> but they're also the ones that are happy that that there are women on set because they know um it's kind of a different setting there it's a it's sometimes just a different atmosphere because people are I, I don't know that for sure because I'm not a man, but um, like you know that that kind of also. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> um, I mean, <laughs> but that's like what what we women also think about when men are together. It's like oh 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 oh, I'm so cool. I'm so cool. So that's yeah, um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> so when the women are on set, it's but kind of oh okay. Let's talk a little bit a little bit nicer around here. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yes, that that brings me to a very interesting question as well, though. Actually, and the only reason I said "thank God you're not a man" is, by the way, because <laughs> I have uh, one brother and two sisters, and that's that just works out perfectly in my eyes. Yeah, Other than that, I couldn't good, care less if you're a man or woman, of course. Sure, but <laughs> yeah, it's a very good combination. I like, I like, I like the general setup. It works well. Um, yeah. <laughs> so th and that I'm brings me to it, another so. interesting point that I wanted to ask you. Yeah, exactly. After you know, like that many years on the planet, <laughs> you 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 kind of. Yeah. You settle into your own skin a little bit, right? Yeah. Uh, best case scenario, <laughs> at least. Um, and uh, the, But what you just said is also very interesting to me because 
I would like to know from you how is it with uh, with uh, with uh, women uh, on on set or, or like camera operators? Is it uh, is there a large support amongst women in in filmmaking, uh, or is it also like is there a bit of competition more? How does When it work? Or is it just out, generally different? Depends no, case I think to case. It, it, it's it's got better. Like the, the when I started out being. Um, 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 as a camera assistant and being um, self-employed, um, I had also some moments where I didn't get on set because the director thought a woman thought she doesn't want to have a, another woman on set because she's not used to it. So, mm. like you know, like for little image shoots or where you are just very li few people, she thought like, oh, I don't know if I really want to have a camera assistant, female camera assistant, because that's going to be two women on set that's going to be complicated so that's like also mm. i i saw that side too and i think but that that changed as well because there are a lot of um women knowing that they have to support each other to 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 get further and it's not like there are so many other people walking around with elbows why should we like hit each other um as well like that that, that doesn't make any sense and i like it i like um i'm Like when I was young, I always hung out with, with boys. So for me, it's also not that I'm not so used to talk or being around with women all the time, but, um, but still I'm, I'm very happy to have another woman on set because I think it's also another exchange and, um, another support you, you have. And I like that. And I met a lot of women yeah. on set that, I, that I would always take with me again. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. I think I think yeah. it really it really only works if you if you if if you lift each other up and that's that's uh, independent of 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 anything of of sex, gender, anything. It, it life generally works better if you lift each other up and I think everybody can just uh, gain from that. I think um, like you know people on set or people who make movies or or in the film industry they are all little Coco in the logo, you know, so you don't, you know, <laughs> they're all crazy. Like, you know, so why, why should I make a difference? We, we all, we all love our job and we all work hard and we all do something that's not normal. So yeah, why, we have something in common. So why should we make differences? Absolutely. Absolutely. Just in order to make a film, you got to be borderline crazy. It doesn't work <laughs> yes. any other way. Why would you do yeah. it otherwise? Like, you you know, exactly. you have an idea and then you chase that idea over weeks and months and nobody's giving you a guarantee that it's going to be just as you had in your head. Actually, to be yeah. honest, most of the time it's not. <laughs> it's like you will adapt <laughs> along the way, you know. I mean, you have a script, but then you improvise on the set. You You have to, you know, filmmaking is not about I stick to the script. It's... It's trying things out also. It's, it's, it's being creative. It's giving everybody their space. If you just tell an actor to just do it exactly like this, you will lose a lot of the creative energy. You know, you, sure. you have to get them on board. It's like, what do you think? Like, here's your, here's your stage. Like, like offer me something. How do you see it? And this is for the camera operator, the same and so on. So there's a lot of people coming together to create something as complex as a fucking film. You got to be both yeah. crazy. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, it's, it's close to magic that something comes out that is, that is incredible and that is making people cry. Uh, that, that doesn't happen also with me. I, I'm not sure I'm too admitted. Uh, so, uh, yeah, filmmaking is, uh, you gotta be borderline crazy without a doubt. So sure. it just, it just makes me think of, <laughs> makes me think of Orson Welles who said, uh, you know, for every kind of art, all you need is a brush and a canvas. Basically as a filmmaker, you need an entire army. And yeah. uh, I think that explains <laughs> the complexity of it uh, a little bit as well. Yeah. Good man, Orson Welles. Good, good man. Yes. Good man. Yeah. Um, so how, if you, what, now that we already agreed or agreed, now that you already said that things are developing a little bit and things are, uh, or more female talent is, is, is coming into the film industry and is, is being pushed, supported. What do you think from your point of view could happen still to maybe make it even easier to support uh, female talent in film? Cool. Good question. 
Um, Thanks. <laughs> I made I'm, it I'm myself. Sure. <laughs> oh, wow. I know. <laughs> See, I'm once. so proud of you. For once. I know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know. I take another sip of gin tonic no. for that. <laughs> do that. Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. Um, I'm empty already. Like, um, I was what? So... <laughs> already? <laughs> it was a very small okay. glass, actually. Yeah. It was a really small glass. It seems to me that that must have been a terribly small glass. Yes, it was really I, very you, small. You glass. must have been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a bit like a shooter glass, actually. Just yeah, uh, slightly bigger. <laughs> yeah. So what you thought this well, would just be a five-minute conversation? I thought you had been listening to this podcast before. <laughs> I mean, yes, I know. I what also, happened? I still have a beer and uh, so back up here. So don't worry. <laughs> all right okay fine yeah. that's yeah. who i'm I'm quite yeah. relieved so anytime you want to have that beer you can just get up and get it quick i go it's, ahead it's totally yeah. fine we'll wait so long yeah, yeah. exactly okay. so uh what was the question right <laughs> <laughs> if um if i think there's so, <laughs> um yes i don't know actually yes. because i think um there's um yeah i i never thought about it before if there's any possibilities to to make it better i think it's always you always have to make it better for all it's not only for women or for for a special type of person you know i think like the film industry should just there the whole film industry is just lacking of people that coming coming after you know because they're you don't have a lot of internships anymore or they are really badly paid. So you don't, you, or they are, there's not enough money on the project that you can take in, uh, take an intern with you. So if, if this would be possible again, I think, um, this would help a lot because then there are a lot of more people thinking about, um, just sneaking into it and, and looking, if this could be a possibility to to work there, especially in the camera department, because ah, the camera so department let me, is let me awesome. just try and put it in a way. <laughs> All right. Yeah. What? What? Sorry. <laughs> no. It, what? You, what you is? Go. What is awesome? Sorry, I missed the that. Because the I was camera talking. department I was is talking. awesome. No, no, like, especially the camera department is awesome. I said. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. I mean, and I'm totally not yeah. biased. I mean, everybody yeah. knows that. I'm totally not biased. I have nothing to do with cameras. So this is just, this is just a hunch. The camera department yeah. is just great. The best. The very best. best. Yeah. Um, the very, very best. Um, th that's, uh, that's very interesting, uh, to, so for me to summarize what you just said a little bit, because I'm, I'm a little slow. Uh, it would would mean basically to open up the to to the the structure of filmmaking to open it up a little bit more to outsiders because i mean independent of the pandemic we understand right now it's all a little more closed off and a little more isolated in itself uh, for outsiders but uh, regardless of that uh, to open it up and make it a little more accessible for people to just stick their nose in pretty much yeah. and understand if they like the way the wind blows and then stick with it basically yeah. that's what you're saying right yeah hmm. and that's not because, the case yeah. i think it's um i think it gets difficult because um i i for example made an internship as a um at a at a really small regional tv sh uh, station and um they they showed me around for two weeks and then they gave me a camera and said let's go there and shoot this little street festival up at the village over there where you don't understand anybody because they talk really crazy dialect but i had the camera in my hand and i just it was learning by doing and i came back and then they um then i got <laughs> Sorry, just quickly, just to give a bit of the backstory here, because you worked for, I think, two or three years for like a regional TV channel, right? Yes. And, and you I saw were, there as an you were part of, exactly. And you were part of an electronic press team, basically. You yes. shot uh, anything from the local bar mitzvah to the funeral of uh, some sort of regional. Yes. Sometimes celebrity or something. Shot a few politicians from the area and yeah. their statements but yes mostly it was 
nonsense that you just took along. No, no, no. no that's <laughs> no, that's uh, not what I was trying no. to say. You yeah, were know, filming things yeah. that matter to the people in the region, right? Yes. Not nonsense. I, yes. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Quality yeah. stuff, right? <laughs> Quality stuff. With <laughs> yeah. old camera gear that is not used anymore. But yeah. <laughs> Which speaks even more for the camera operator to come up with something decent then. Yes. See? There yeah. you go. Yeah. And, okay. um, yeah. and and you did that for how long? For three years? For two years. And after that, I switched okay. to a camera rental to make my apprenticeship um, or finish my apprenticeship at right. a camera rental. And that and is... Media um, design, right? Yeah. It's yeah, it's called media design, but mostly it's kind of that's that's like the, that's the next thing, you know. Um, you have like this apprenticeship that is so it says nothing actually because you 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 learn a little bit of camera, you learn a little bit of sound. You can either go to um to to be um a radio station recordist or you can be um in the tv series and operate a camera or you can be um a editor and do something with avid but like there's not 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 enough time to to really show you what you what you can do with it like i actually found out to really to specialize be, in something yeah, you enjoy yeah and i exactly you you cannot specialize or you can specialize during your apprenticeship in your wherever you have your um, your apprenticeship in, not the school, but the the, the work. Um, but at the, 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 end, the, the company where you the are. company, yeah. But but then you finish, and actually, first after my apprenticeship, I found out that this camera assistant thing is actually a really cool thing, and that it exists. <laughs> so. Nobody told me before, and so I couldn't really see it before, and and it's very hard to get in there then because um you have like you have a three years apprenticeship, but you actually have no idea what what it is, what you can do as a camera assistant. So you you again learning by doing, being on jobs where you just look other people over the shoulder and um, looking what they do, and that's cool. I think you can learn a lot doing that, but then you don't need this apprenticeship, you know. So I think there should be a change to 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 let people in and then maybe specialize earlier so they can have the time or the chance to to go there where they really want to without losing five years of yeah. their time. Or that you go and say, I want to learn how to operate a camera. I want to make movies. Yeah. To go and say that I don't want any of the other stuff. I want this. Yeah. For people that really have a very strong vision of where they want to go because it's hard to believe, but those people are out there as well. I mean, it beats me, but those people out there, <laughs> yeah. they know that I want to do this, you know? Yeah. So, okay. And that would make it a little easier uh, to, so. to get in there. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Interesting as well, because you, and I think this is a great moment also to go dig in your personal history a little bit because you actually, <laughs> yeah, sure. I like go doing ahead. that. I like doing it other people's, uh, you know, personal <laughs> yeah. history, dirty laundry <laughs> and all of that. Right? So um, I, I, I think it's interesting to mention that you actually learned to be a, a translator, a foreign language, uh, what would you call it? A foreign language? Correspondent. Tra tra correspondent. Thank you very much. Obviously, you learned that stuff. Yeah. So <laughs> thanks for helping out. There. Yeah, at least my language is a little bit rusty now, but... <laughs> well, they should hear your Spanish, <laughs> right? We could conquer <laughs> yes, a whole new yeah. listenership. <laughs> yeah, que tal? Yeah. Anyway, at least, so, uh, at least the Spanish people that always now, tell me how, how great I talk. Yeah. <laughs> Of course. I'm sure German sure. people tell you yeah. that as well and, and English sure. as well. I, I will do it on their behalf now. So yeah, far, so good, you. Claudie. Well yeah. done. That's <laughs> well not so done. shabby. So, uh, you see, yeah, well, so you, you, you studied that for, uh, not, it was also an apprenticeship or was it a, what would you, would you say? Um, um, it's kind of a study. It's an, it's, it's, it's got a, German school, school system, super complicated. Yeah. Let's not it's even get two into years it. Of school, but three years, like, right? It's two years of school. actually two okay. years. I made three years out of it because I liked it so much. But <laughs> I know, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> that's same with me in school. I liked it yeah. so much. You liked I decided it so much. to just stay a little longer. Yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. no, I'm not yeah. ready to leave. This is great. It's so cozy really. in here. <laughs> I like all of you people. Yeah. 
So, um, so for two years, in your case, three, because you were obviously overqualified, you, yeah. um, you wanted to, uh, you did that. Uh, and yes. you also worked in that. F no, you never really worked in that. Field, I, did I did work as a, it, it wasn't really a language correspondent. Um, I was working as a team assistant or secretary of the, um, boss of a company, um, where I, could use a little bit of my language skills yeah but um it was it's mm -hmm. i it, it was a nice place and um i really um liked my boss a lot he was a he was a really great dude and we had a lot of fun but it's um it was just still a workplace and a i just i was just working at a computer i was there every time at the same desk um always there and always said the same things and I really, really got bored after a year. <laughs> it's just not my kind of thing. <laughs> so yeah. And I this is when you also something. decided mm, you Maybe were like, something else. Mm, this is, this is not working out. <laughs> this is, this is, sorry, this is not working out. So you ended it like uh, you would a good relationship, clean cut. Right. And, yeah. uh, And then yeah. when, when did you decide to get into film? Like what do you, was there a particular moment? I mean, it doesn't have to be. Sometimes things just happen over time, but was there a particular moment where you're like, oh, film, that's, that's actually something I could really get, see myself getting into. Actually, um, Danny, um, brought me into this, um, because, um, friend of ours who has already yeah. been on the show together he, with he was uh, on Laura. The yeah. Yes. I will link and to the previous episode. Yeah. Because yeah. he's he's a sound engineer and um, I myself make a little bit of music um, some some time to time, and um, so I was recording um, my my few songs. Some at his great place. music. Yeah. All right. A little great. <laughs> But um, I, I he... like Tüten Fußball is still one of my favorite songs. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> you can continue now. Yeah. You can continue yeah. now. And, um, so he, he thought about me, um, checking out the, the sound engineering, um, department of, of movies because he thought maybe this, um, is something for me. And I didn't get to the sound engineering because, um, I went to the internship at the, at the regional, um, TV station and they just gave me the camera. So that's why I kind of got into the camera department. <laughs> <laughs> They didn't, like <laughs> they, they didn't need a sound person. They didn't need a sound person like any decent camera department. Yeah. No, no, we don't need sound. It's okay. No. Just a camera and a shotgun mic. That that'll do. It's fine. There's a there's a yeah. German saying actually. It's called um, um, "Ohne Licht geht's nicht. Ohne Ton geht's schon." <laughs> that means like that it's not That's a terrible working saying, without though. light, but it works without sound. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> working with light is all right. <laughs> working with lights all right no working with no working with lights not all right working without sound is round i don't know i was just trying to make it rhyme just like yeah. it does in german yeah but uh yeah anyway something like that so yeah, working without it's a lights, bad saying, it's but, impossible yeah. but working without sound it's it's a very bad saying because yeah. i i believe sound in filmmaking is actually 60 percent or something of, yes it does you can forgive do a, a not so nice picture but terrible sound is uh yeah. is is really absolutely terrible everybody's be like yeah. oh my god i want to get out of here <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so um, um he actually got me there and then i just made my path and the way it got in front of me <laughs> and when did you know that this is really what you want to do because obviously you you got into that you wanted to try out something else you didn't want to be a foreign language correspondent anymore this was something that came up you tried it out uh it wasn't from the start basically wow that's what i want to do now right no i, I thought about yeah my my main thing was i want to be Uh, I want to be working uh, something creative or something social. So um, I try to work as a or have an internship as a as a uh, mm, how you say um, person uh, a carekeeper for disabled people. Sorry, I just finished my gin tonic. Yeah, uh, I I ah. heard that. <laughs> 
So that was actually sorry, kind of sorry. an attention for me, um, working with disabled people, because I think they um, are also very, um, um, very great people. And, and, and I, it, it sounds like it, it sounds very stupid, um, but I think they can. No, they I can, know how you mean that. The exchange Absolutely. between them and, and me is kind of, I, I like that because you can learn so much. Uh, from them because they they think in kind of a slower or different way sometimes they approach things differently often and i think that's um that's a really yes. nice nice way and and that's why i um and like it's a that. very gratifying uh thing it's a very gratifying yes. job as well i think that's also yeah. what you want to say right yeah no yeah. yeah i i i know that from my community service uh which I still had to do for 10 months. I am that old. There was still community service or <laughs> army around. And I had to yeah. do community service for 10 months. And it was it was one of the best times in my life. Absolutely. Um, it was a very gratifying job. And I look back very fondly to that. So I can absolutely relate to that. Yeah. yeah. But and then, what, yeah. What, what gave, what gave the, the, the final... Why I did choose between those two and then got yeah. to the final camera assistant. Um, yes. I think it was just coincidences. Um, sometimes, you know, it's just um, it, uh, the things have to do with um, you don't get the one job where you where you ask for and, and they just said they don't have any space for you. And then you then then you take the other path. And that's kind of what it was. I wanted to do that at the it, it's called Sozialstation. It's, or it's kind of a um, a thing where they just hang out with people and do some some work with them twice a week where they go mini golfing or stuff with, with disabled people and they just don't have some space for me so um, I took the other, other internship and um, that's how I got there <laughs> All right. and then it was just camera Which... no sound and I really liked it and because of my brother who's a photographer I kind of also had a like you know wow. an affinity to to picture as well so yeah i think um it kind of got me there because of that as well probably wow <laughs> yeah big influence I, I am, of course my brother i am just i love him <laughs> he's wow. making great pictures by sounds the way. like a great you guy know him yeah <laughs> he's awesome oh bastian fisher really? yeah awesome oh that awesome brother pictures too. Yeah, that brother yeah. well yeah it's uh <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's you know, mm? he tries. He tries real yeah. hard. I heard. Yeah. He tries real yeah. hard, and there's something in that. <laughs> there's something in that. He tries real hard. <laughs> so that's that. that there's something in. You should have right? respect. You gotta for give that, that to him. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. If nothing else, <laughs> have respect for that at least. A little bit, right. <laughs> so um, that's uh, that's nice to know that uh, you know uh, that you were. You uh, were positively influenced by me. Thank you very sure. much. Um, <laughs> and then, and then you just, you just, you just follow that path. It, also, when you say that to me, it's it, what I, what I'm just. I catch myself thinking is, you know, the, the path, the the path, the path of least resistance doesn't always have to be the wrong one, right? No. Uh, sometimes you can also just be like water and just go with the flow and uh, because I think we're so often hung up on, you know, you got to fight for your dreams and stuff. Uh, you can, of course, you can, but you also don't have to, right? Uh, no. That that's the, I'm taking that from what you're just saying. Just sometimes going with seeing what's available and going with that can go a very long way. I could also have been a very very bad musician, but I chose to be <laughs> <have a laughs> pretty instead. Okay you chose to be <laughs> a great camera assistant. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I wouldn't want to have, uh, you know, any verdict on that because I believe, um, I, I like your music mm -hmm. very much. Sorry. Yeah. I like okay. your, I like your, I like your music very <laughs> much. And actually, sorry, it's all the gin tonic. I think I will have to edit that. Um, yeah. that was a little too much. <laughs> Let's see if it stays in. Let's, Let's see. see. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, I haven't made up not. my mind. You know, <laughs> I try to keep the integrity of the conversation. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. Mm. We'll see. We'll see. Wait, you got to tune in t tomorrow <laughs> to find out if it's in. 
<laughs> or not. Yeah, um, let's see if I do that. <laughs> so let's let's see. <laughs> let's see if I do that. Let's see if I have time for that. <laughs> um, so that's uh, that's uh, that's nice to know. Uh, also, and I also would like to know now that you're a camera. Uh, operate uh, a, a camera assistant actually you said that you are more like a camera assistant even though i think that's that's uh, a little short because for really two years for this regional tv channel you did all the uh, everything their clips uh. everything like you did the sound you did the recording you you were the one man gun a uh, one woman uh, gun and shoot Gun and run team gun and, gun and run, run. Team. that's it exactly uh, that's the team <laughs> and you 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 absolutely Nailed that. So, but now on the film set, you are in this position where you are a uh, camera assistant, focus puller, like you said. And where does it go from here? Is, uh, well, where would you like to go? I, I don't like this question of where do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> I think it is one of the most terrible questions in any job interview, but, but, yeah. but obviously you have probably some projection of yourself where would you like to where do you see yourself what would you like to to where would you like to get first of all i like being a camera assistant it's um it's much more to it than just pulling focus it's like i'm i'm head of the department of camera i'm mm. organizing all that stuff i'm 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 the one that looks out for the rest of the crew in the in the department at least maybe also for others and um And it's the whole technical stuff, the whole preparation, um, knowing knowing your gear, buying all the extra accessories you need and um, to feel yourself comfortable and the DOP comfortable. But um, I also, like, at the last job, um, the, um, the, the movie, the cameraman... Uh, often just said like, you know, you, you take the shot, you make the shot, you operate that. So I was actually holding a camera and operating the, the, the thing. And, um, my second assistant, he pulled the focus and that was kind of, um, kind of a new experience for me being like, I, I did that for, you know, nowadays for Corona, we did a lot of video streams and so on where just like have the little camera on and, and, and do operate it. But like on a movie set, it was like the first time I really had the responsibility to hold the camera for a long take and um, having it on my shoulder and operate it. And it kind of felt good. <laughs> so that would be my next step. I would, um, of course, maybe far in the future, I would like to be a DOP. But like the next step I would do is uh, probably... Director doing... of photography for everybody who does yeah, know. Yeah. Sorry, of course. Um, Sorry, but yeah. No, no. I, I'm just. I just know that that's not necessary common knowledge. Yes, please continue. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so yeah, operator um, being there and and operating a camera is um, is a complete different different thing, and it, it's kind of exciting as well. And so that that would be my next step. And I'm looking forward to it. Wow! Like, if there's anyone out there. Who decides needing camera operator? <laughs> operator rest, maybe. <laughs> um, actually, lately, you know, so this is this is. Uh, I'll let you in on on how I've been preparing this episode a little bit because uh, I, uh, in because I, to be honest with you, the the gender question in Germany is a whole different one than it is in English. Yes, like, I learned now over the last few days that, for instance. In English now, you don't say actresses or actor anymore. Everybody's an actor, male or female. Okay. There's actually the opposite. If you call a woman an actress, it, this is actually considered ah, to be okay. discriminating. Wow. Um, so, yeah, I know. So that's why also in my intro, and I hope I'm doing it right. I, I'm, I, I did my fair amount of research. I am flawed. You have no idea. So uh, this <laughs> might this might be wrong that I apologize. But this is my current state of knowledge is that it is operator and actor. And uh, so it's actually all one term. Uh, and, and not like in German where you really have this very big discussion between uh, how you how you make it as open as possible, basically. I think it's actually, I, I, I actually think this is kind of the better idea than the way we we Germans do it because um, it makes sentences so much longer now because you have to um, respect the male and the female 
um, constellation of the word. And not just um, male and female, also also, also diverse gender, or non-defined. Uh, diverse, and exactly. Yeah. And, and, and it's exactly. kind of when you just <clears throat> put it all in one word, it would make it so much simpler for everybody so everybody could relate to it. And I'm, for example, there's, um, there was like this one discussion about, um, I had with a camera woman, with a, a director of photography, uh, female. And she, um, she said there are a lot of times, um, she left, she was left out in getting chops because the people were talking about a cameraman. And just because they said cameraman, we are looking for a cameraman. They forgot that there are camera women there too so they were just thinking about men and that's why she often got forgotten so and that's kind of yeah that's stupid let me just find a term where we can i think i think there's a point to that yes and i i think there is a point to that um that's why you know i see this as as a creative exchange this is what's happening there at the moment i think this is a very necessary discussion conversation not even discussion a conversation that we should have i think what would help if is if we drop a little bit of the hysteria hysteria around it and just see that there are there are opposing people. views <laughs> there are people exactly but through a dialogue through a conversation uh the the liveliness of a language we have to find new ways to describe things to be as inclusive as possible obviously and this will take some work so just like i did my due diligence now and okay how does this in work in english and i'm not even sure it's right uh, i do fuck this up in german as well um and then i apologize for it um but i try to be mindful of it so this is how we should have these conversations uh with enough forgiveness for the other person that we're having the conversation with in case they make a mistake and also to be ready to take in feedback in sure. how we can maybe improve the way that we speak about this. Because I read this the other day, and I didn't think of it that way, but one of the great examples was, you know, there are 99 women in a room, right? And you have, you will call them uh, camera women in German now, right? Now, because yeah. I know this is a little difficult because we're having this conversation <laughs> in English, now we're talking about German, but bear with me here. Please, right? So, and and one man walks into the room and is 99 women and one man. And all of a sudden, to have a collective term for all these people gathered there, you refer to these 99 women and this one man as camera men. There's obviously something a little wrong with that, right? Yeah. So, so, and, and this is something that we're trying to solve. And we will only solve this if we work on this together. Like, not as you, you're such a dick, you're such a douchebag, because you're saying like this, let's just chill the fuck down. And just have this conversation. It's very necessary to have it, but everybody who's part of the conversation should also just, you know, just just chill out a little bit. I I, I understand though that I'm saying this, uh, being a man for one, uh, being heterosexual for one. Uh, so it makes this for me. It makes it a lot easier for me to say, chill the fuck out and let's have this conversation. This is on, for minorities, it's, it's, this is a whole other question. It's a lot more difficult to be chilled about this because they are the ones that are being discriminated. They are the ones that have to face this every single day. So I, so take this with a grain of salt, what I'm saying here. But I do believe nonetheless, in the long run, uh, the more we have turned this into a dialogue and not a fight, the better it will be for all of us uh, at the end of the day. Anyway, that was a very long excursion now. Do you want to add anything to that? Sorry. No, I think so too. I think just, um, yeah, maybe maybe we should decide not to prefer to women or men or just have a different different approach, you know, like camera people or, you know, like yes. doing, thinking in a bigger context and then maybe everybody's going to be happy. But I think um, I think it's 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 important that, like the minorities um get bigger or have bigger hearing nowadays but i think um it, you know like just talking about a, a bank who's addressing the their clients and client passes whatever you want to say it in english for female client um this is 
this is like where I just think sometimes it goes too far, you know, because we, do you really want to stop there now and talk about this little bank if they address their clients perfectly? Or is it actually a bigger context where we can all think about changing something, you know? That's mm -hmm. that's what I think. Like if if yes. we if we all think in a bigger context and be better to each other, you know, not everybody's like everybody's just looking with the finger on or or showing the finger on to other people. Like, but what about looking at yourself for the beginning and then just say, what can I change? And then what can we can Russ change? Maybe that's that's the beginning. But then again, if that you works understand what especially I mean. <laughs> for <laughs> people who are no, no, I understand what you mean, and I, and I I agree with you. I, I but like I said earlier as well, it's it's a lot easier to uh, do that if you are not facing any daily discrimination, right? Sure. Um, so I believe if it, it's a lot easier to say, you know, let let that just be, you know, let let's chill out about that. I, I will not. I will stand by what I said. I do believe in order to change anything, we need to have a dialogue because right now I'm also seeing that we're having two very extreme sides, and the louder they scream at each other, the more it's drifting apart. I have the the, the feeling yeah. at least. And then again, I also believe sometimes that's necessary to, in the end, come to some sort of constructive result, maybe as well. No. I, I, it's difficult to tell, but yeah. I do believe a, a dialogue uh, about this will always help more than than uh, an open fight. And uh, even though, see, I'm not even sure anymore. Now that I've said that, <laughs> I'm not even sure anymore. I might be entirely wrong. Maybe sometimes you also just really have to fight to to get to where you want to be. That's also possible. Sometimes in a relationship, sure you, you have also to have fight. to fight, and maybe sometimes you even have to get loud to uh, to to have that friction for something to come out. So I, I. Bottom line, I don't really want to judge it. Uh, I don't want yeah. to judge ever. I don't want to be uh, the one saying what's right, what's wrong. Uh, in my mind, sometimes I feel it would help if we have a dialogue instead of that. But then what do I know? Nothing. I whatsoever. think everybody can change what they say or how they say things. So like, you should always start at yourself at first and then go over to other people, think what... or tell them what they should change. You should first yes. try to change that on yourself than trying to change others. And you should always listen to people that are discriminated. And sure. and I think the, the bottom line of everything is if somebody tells you, look, this is how I see myself and this is how I would like to see, I would like you to see me and this is how I would like to be addressed, then that is a that's a question of... of of self declaration right that should be that should be respected from anybody so sure. i think that's the the lowest common denominator uh, that we should all agree on and unfortunately that's not even happening and that's why i'm saying it's a lot easier to uh, to say chill down or chill out uh, when uh, you are not facing discrimination so it is obviously a very loaded topic as well and this is why at this point i would also very much like to say that this is a very interesting uh, topic a very interesting conversation like i already pointed out i am flawed i'm very limited in my perception uh, so whoever hears this and has something to contribute uh, to this topic uh, feels that i missed something that i really said some immense bullshit you can now leave me a voice message uh, on the website. <laughs> you can write me a message. I will gladly take it up, make this uh, uh, an, an episode on the Yellow Van because I think it is a very interesting topic. And I do believe that in the end, it is really all about conversation and about dialogue. And I am very happy to be a part of that dialogue. So anybody who wants to just, you know, scream right in, Drop and drop a message. Leave me a voicemail in case I haven't mess uh, mentioned that, and we'll we'll take it from there. So that was a long excursion, but it, I think we opened that up because of women in cinema, right? And, I think so too. Uh, so yeah. it is at least a little bit connected in that sense, and I think it is a very very interesting topic. Um, I would like to know from you yeah. <laughs> one thing that I think that that is a very important question that people underestimate. People that don't know the film industry so much, uh, a, a little bit on a on a lighter note. Um, Why is catering one of the single most important things on a film set, Chloe? <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, with, uh, with catering, you can upset all the people. 
or you can make them happy. <laughs> you are, when you're on set, it's like the only possibility to get your energy or your food is from this catering. And if you have a really, really bad catering, you don't want to eat or you cannot eat <laughs> because it's too bad. So, of course, there are going to be a lot of grumpy people. I'm, for example, I'm very grumpy when I'm hungry. And, um, and <laughs> I'm also grumpy in the mornings, you would say now, but this changed. Um, it got better. No, no, but yeah, I'm, no, I mean, no, no, no. <laughs> No, it's, um, I, I had like, I had the suit, um, two years ago in Berlin and, um, there, it was a series and they were already shooting, I think, 60 or 50 days and they had really bad catering. And I just, I just had like the last three episodes. So I was like there for the last 21 days. <laughs> and a few of the team was already there the whole time and they were so grumpy they were already they were warning me beforehand already and said like Claudia you cannot eat this if you have the possibility just get something to eat somewhere else wherever you can but don't eat stuff like from there so um, yeah the people were already really really <laughs> bad <laughs> and grumpy before i came there yeah it, it helps a lot if you if I think you it have makes a sense. bad mood um of everybody you cannot shoot a film it's it's not gonna it's not gonna make people happy they cannot work as good as they can when they when they are happy <laughs> and it was really is it bad. true that uh, the success of a film oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. No, I just wanted to, is it, is it true that the, the success of a film has in the past uh, been uh, also slightly been influenced by the quality of the catering? I would say so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the final outcome? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, Look, yeah, I knew yeah, this film probably. was going to be shit by the time we got our first meal served. Yeah. Uh, there was no yeah. hope for it. Okay, but it does make absolute sense. You spend so many hours, so much time on a film set, uh, so much energy. Also, there's a lot of uh, physical labor. Uh, you you carry heavy things. Uh, so in order to refuel, you need something to keep you going. And everybody knows that tasty food helps uh, yes. in your energy intake, with your energy yeah. intake. All right. Uh, that's just something... Uh, in case you ever come across a grumpy filmmaker or anything like that, you will know in the future that it's probably because the catering sucked. Um, <laughs> yeah, for probably. too long, maybe. For too long, for maybe. Too you know, long. <laughs> there might be lifelong consequences even. Uh, so, you know, whenever you do that, just just blame the caterer. Uh, I'll, I'll, I think what I would like to get into... Coming to the end of this a little bit, to our ride, yeah, I would like of you to know, this is a question that I, that I always ask as well, because this podcast was very much inspired by stories that I came across during the first lockdown and ever since, where people just bridged over, where creativity, human creativity just was so shining and beautiful uh, to bridge over to other people in a time where it was very difficult to have physical contact and still is. So this is still ongoing, actually, a year later. Uh, do you have anything where you were like, wow, that was something that really influenced me. That was something that brought tears to my eyes or this is something that really moved me deeply. Is, is there anything like that that happened over the last year? Hmm. <laughs> um, well, I, I don't know. I thought um, you came prepared. Yes, I know, and I'm um, got it there. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I mean, it's not a very simple <laughs> question, though. I have to say. Oh, well, um, what actually? What I always what, say. Yeah. Yes. What yes. You go. Say? Go. Don't no, mind me. Go. No, just maybe. No, no, nothing important. Give I, me time I've never to had think. Anything important? What to say. do you always so, say? No. <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay, you want to buy some time? Okay, totally fine. Um, it, it maybe the, the the fault lies in my in the way that I ask the question, right? I uh, and 
no, 16 episodes in. You know, of why course. would I have it's, it's improved your fault. that question anyway? <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it always is. I'm the host. Of course, it's yeah. my fault. Yeah. Um, like, for instance, also it was for me, I have brought this up before, but it doesn't have to be some story in particular. It can also be a, a work of art, actually. Like, for instance, what really moved me very much, very deeply, was uh, the Alicia Keys song, uh, Good Job. I know you said I, that before on a podcast. I know. I know, I know. That's that's why I just said that. It's like, bear with me. I've said that before. Um, it's a beautiful song that just brings all of that to an to an emotional peak in a way. The way that uh, you know, good job. The kind of gratitude that's in the song. The the love that's in the song. The everything. Like the the the, the her entire demeanor. The way she presents it, sings it, is just absolutely beautiful to me. It still is and it will be for the rest of my life. So it can also be something like this. Um, Actually, it was... Um, still nothing? I, <laughs> <laughs> still buying time there. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> You know, I can no, keep actually, talking. It's totally fine. Yeah, yeah I mean, no, I'll just, I'll just keep on you know. talking for four or five minutes and can shut down <laughs> or something. No. Um. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd rather not. Nobody would like no. to see that, trust me. So, yes, you got something. Oh. Um, no, yeah. Um, All it's, right. Um, <laughs> Is that um, your actually, ringtone? That really yes. rocks. Yes, it's um, the, it's the start so, um, of a song from Andy Franco. Um, that's that's my ringtone. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, nice, very nice. Uh, yeah, a link my, to her as well. My favorite her. song of her, um, "Shameless," Great is um, yeah, awesome, awesome musician. She has a Great new song. album. A link to that and, as well. Uh, yeah, she she actually. Oh, she, really? Uh, I haven't. Yeah. Uh... Revolutionary love. Nice. I will listen to that. Yeah, it's uh, it's really nice. I I like it a lot, but I'm looking forward I to that. I do like everything of her mostly, so um, yeah. But she's um, she was also really yeah. Uh, but because yeah. all her stuff is really yeah. good. Yeah, it is. And um, but going back to your question, actually, um, what what ah, I yes, think, now finally yes yeah. okay. <laughs> what I think was um, helping me the most actually through the time was um, was. A very good friend of mine here. Um, she's working with um, she's working with the um, refugees in a refugee refugees. camp. Refugees, yeah. And um, we decided Biggie, to make some right. Yeah, Bianca. Yeah, and and we decided. Yeah, big to, shout out to Biggie. She's doing yeah. such an amazing job. Awesome Sorry, work. just quickly before yeah. you continue, because I have had the great pleasure of talking to her. She is a woman with such love and integrity and the job that she does every day. She teaches refugees uh, in, in Germany. It's, it's amazing. She's an absolutely amazing woman. Big shout out to her here. Yes, now you continue, please. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Everything's true what you said, of course. But um, yeah, so she was, um, she was actually helping me a lot through the, through the first shutdown um, or lock, lockdown, actually, because um, she helped me keeping my motivation and my um yeah not going completely insane having nothing to do so we decided to make some um sew some masks for the for the refugees and um i'm not very good but my sewing machine had just bought it um a few months before so we had a lot of great days <laughs> sewing some masks <laughs> For refugees who could have done better than us, but <laughs> so that was kind of um, a good thing. Yeah, we we had a lot of fun and kept me sane, <laughs> more or less. <laughs> and my Instamatic, I have nice. A, I so have you, a little, you were... um, yeah, picture camera, like um, how you say, instant camera pic, uh, instant uh, instant camera, In yeah, instant, instant camera. film, yeah, yeah, like Polaroid, so, like form of Polaroid, Polaroid. yeah. yeah. Uh, just but not Polaroid. Different, no, it's yeah. Fuji. Yeah. Anyway, it's complicated. It's but yeah, same thing. Yeah. But um, yeah, so this kept me kind of also very um, motivated to go outside um, doing stuff and making pictures of 
things I haven't seen before because I haven't been to Stuttgart in this kind of areas like this, walking around. So that was also very good. And that helped me. And that was nice. And I still keep on trying to make my 60,000 steps a week. So yes, that is a good thing that happened. <laughs> 60,000 steps a week. I, I have no comparison. Like, is that a lot? Um, it's, I think it's, it's, achievable. it sounds a lot. I mean, it sounds a lot. <laughs> yes. Okay. If you, if you like, you should make 8,500 steps a day to achieve it during the whole week. And that's kind of 8,000 steps or I think three kilometers or something like that. Maybe four. Okay. So, yeah. Well, that's still 60,000 steps a week. Well done. So the Lomo, the, the instant camera was a motivation for you to get your ass up, go out there and take some shots. Yes. So creativity is healthy as well. That's yes, what you're saying. Yes, it right? is. Yeah. Amazing. It's very good. This and doing some handcrafted things like um, I restorated, uh, renovated some old um, furniture and stuff like that. That was um, also very good. That helped. A lot. But it was the creative endeavors, the creative things that really, well, sewing face masks is also creative to some extent, I believe, right? I'm, I got pretty good in that now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ever need a face mask? Um, I know there are only FFP2 masks allowed in Germany now, but if you ever need a face mask, um, just hit me up. <laughs> 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 or if you have a face mask that you want embellished or anything like that, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. get in touch with Cloudy. I will link yeah. to her uh, webpage. Sewing What's it called again? Webpage. Beautiful, beautiful <laughs> face masks dot com or yeah, something like or, that. Uh, improve uh, your face dot com, something like that. <laughs> I don't know. Funny face masks dot com. <laughs> ah, something okay. Well, anyway, I will link to it. You, you just send me the link. I'll, I'll set it up. So no problem. Uh, now over the holidays, that would be a great thing, right? To the loved yeah. ones, improve your face. Yeah. That's a great. Improve do you have, do you have uh, holiday com. vouchers or anything like that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, just type in the code. Uh, peep your face off. <laughs> Easter. Yes, e Easter your face. <laughs> nice. <off>. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. Good, 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 nice. Good marketing. Good marketing. <laughs> yes, I can I tell. There's a strategy behind that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, and now that we have, uh, you have shared with us uh, what 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 kept you going a little bit. Uh, how how now a year in as well? How has the pandemic changed you? If it has at all, I don't know. Yes, I got healthier. At least um, I, that's what I think. I'm, uh, um, for example, taking my daily walks now and um, I care about what I eat more than before. Like I, I did care about what I eat before. I, I'm For a while now, I'm vegetarian and I st stopped smoking um, last year. But um, it's also the amount... Thank you. It's also the amount of what you eat and um, when you eat. And I think um, I, I took a lot of time sorting out how and why I want to eat what. <laughs> yes. So I, I first gained a little bit of uh, weight and now I lost a little bit of weight. And I think that's good. <laughs> Lucky you. I've just been gaining weight. Like, that's all yeah, I look, doing. yeah. I started. I started that's all the, the story. lockdown. That's... I started the lockdown. The first lockdown with fasting, like um, uh, one week without eating anything, um, to uh, to clean the body more or less. And um, after that, I was kind of mm -hmm. processing everything that I do and want to do. And the, this took a while, but now it's it's kind of settled and now i know how much i want to eat and when i want to eat good yeah that's important i mean really like food and and all of that who would have believed what you put into yeah. your body is actually important 
I was <laughs> yeah. shocked when I first heard that. But, yeah, uh, totally yeah, right. Seems seems yeah. there's a thing with that. The, a thing that it seems there's a thing with that. It's connected to health and yeah. stuff. Like I, I it's mean, like so you know when you, when mind. you're working on on film sets, it's mostly you you don't you have not you, you don't normally work from nine till six. So you always it always changes. Mm. Um, you start the week from nine till six, and at the end you work from um, two o'clock in the afternoon to, to six o'clock in the morning. So um, you kind of the way you eat things are um, it's kind of unhealthy because sometimes you eat at the, in the morning at seven o'clock and then at the end you eat at eleven o'clock at night and to to find a balance and you always have something to eat you know like if you don't have the breakfast and the and the uh, lunch there are still some um, some bread rolls with stuff and you have chocolate and you have snacks all the time and you of course you have some fruit <laughs> and <laughs> some vegetables sometimes but you always have something to eat like and if you don't and if you don't watch yourself you just like you know you you pass by the catering table and you think like oh something to eat and you eat and so you 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 kind of just smoosh mm. the stuff in your face <laughs> and because you think like i need it i need it but um when you actually think about it it's always available it's always available and of course you work hard so you of yeah. course need the energy but you don't need it all the time and you need don't need it so often so like if you just sometimes think about it it's all right you don't need the bread roll just because it sits there you know it's like just leave it out you don't have to eat it even if there is the name from you on it because it's vegan you don't have to eat it you can just leave it there somebody else will eat it somebody's always hungry <laughs> so yeah lessons for a film set if you're not hungry somebody else is don't worry about it it will be yeah. fine yeah good that's a very valuable lesson yeah for a lot it of is. people i think <laughs> i yeah. think so too yeah I, I think so too because otherwise you will just you know roll out of the film set at some point <laughs> uh, because usually there's plenty of food there's plenty of food usually you can always eat at a yeah. film set that's true if you have a hand yeah. free you can just always grab something <laughs> On, if you pass uh, by on a film set, the, just the, the say set like you're caper. the extra and get yeah. something to eat. <laughs> Actually, you know what? That's <laughs> happened before. I, I just yesterday I watched um I watched the late late show with James Corden. Uh mm -hmm. I've I've been watching that a lot lately. Uh because I, I like the way that they're dealing with the whole pandemic and their show format and everything. Um and and he said actually no, wait. Um, no, it was him. Yes, he was talking to to Minnie Driver, and he told her a story where he would just um, because she Minnie Driver told James Corden that she can smell a film set from a mile away because she loves making movies so much. Like <laughs> whenever there is a cable lying around somewhere in the city, friends call her. It's like I saw a cable on Forty Second Street. I think you better come here. It smells like a movie set, and then she's there. And she's like, where's the movie set? Where's the movie set? Who's shooting? Who do I know? What is this? Who is this guy? You know, that's how she is. I, I think it's amazing. By the way, she also has a podcast now, Mini Driver. Mini Questions. Very, very good. I've listened to it. I can recommend it. It's a, it's a very, very nice podcast. I'll link okay. to that as well. And then James Corden told her the story that he once was uh, uh, just also passing through the city, I think in LA, and there was a film set. They didn't really know who was shooting it. They didn't uh, have any idea. They weren't invited. They weren't part of it. But they just went up to the catering stand and they were like, yeah, we'd like to have this and we'd like to have that. We'd like to have this. <laughs> and, and, and they were served. They got everything they wanted. And then they walked off. And he said he never really figured out who what they were shooting or what happened there. <laughs> but he did it so casually <laughs> that it's it's apparently very easily possible. So in case you should ever go hungry, you know, life isn't so kind to you. You walk by a film set, you can just Get a bit of grub there. Just saying, you know, make use of that. Yeah. See, valuable life lessons right there, right there, yeah, right here in the exactly. show. It is an educational podcast. What can I say? So, um, that's, I, I think, you know, one of the last closing questions always that I would like to hear from you. And this is, I think I need to specify this a little more. Uh, what opportunities do you think lie in this pandemic? And I don't mean personally, because I think personally, it is it is very much uh, a question of uh, your 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 background, your your current whereabouts, and so on and so on. There are so many things at play. But uh, from a societal point of view, uh, a global point of view, even what do you think um, could be 
an opportunity or one of the opportunities in this pandemic for us as a society? I think people um, maybe recognize that we that it's kind of takes all of us. Like um, there was, I don't know how far it got um, now, but um, at the at the beginning, um, there was like this kind of um, thinking about the about the general um, income in Germany. Like you know that that everybody deserves the same amount of income, ground income, like small amount of income that everybody deserves. That basic income. Are you basic talking about income. universal basic income? Yes, uh, yeah. that that's the that's the proper translation. So everybody gets sure. everybody gets a gets a gets a certain amount paid out, the, independent of uh, social status, job, yeah. whereabouts, anything. For every yeah. citizen of a country will get this amount of money every month in the bank. No questions yeah. asked, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like, I think that this got a little bit bigger during the first lockdown and probably um, still maybe gets a little bit more feedback now or positive feedback because, um, because they probably find out that we all need a kind of, same um status to start off you know like there there are less disadvantages of, of people when they all have like a ground setting for for everyone and um and even like the the whole social departments you know i think they um um they got hurt more now than than before because now they're social relevant and and maybe this is Maybe this is good. Maybe maybe the, you mean the social the, the social professions, right? Yes, the social, the social sector. In, yes, in a the society. social yeah, sector, yeah. Mm -hmm. kind of everybody who's working with old people or in the yeah, uh, you know, hospitals and stuff. So I think um, like that yeah, they get hurt. Workers, yeah. yeah, healthcare workers. I think that they get hurt. I think this is kind of maybe now the time where 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 they they actually get hurt and and don't talk against walls. And this is probably good. I think this is. So this there is an is opportunity overdue. to. Uh, yes, I agree. I, I absolutely agree. So I think uh, there's a there's a, an opportunity here to rethink of what professions we give value to in our societies, yeah. and uh, and how we show their our appreciation and uh, their value, also in yeah. terms of payment and in terms of of really uh, like appreciation. Uh, And I, I believe that's a very, very valid, a very good point. I think there is definitely an opportunity in that. I unfortunately feel that that's already kind of moving away a little bit again, yeah, but this is an ongoing lost. process. Yeah. And I do hope that this will nonetheless be something that we take from this. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I think there's a, a very strong disparity in, in our societies about who makes a lot of money with bullshit sorry to be this blatant <laughs> yeah. um yeah. and people who really contribute something to society by the way i'm not sure i contribute something to society just if everybody says i'm judgmental i'm i'm a filmmaker photographer uh, i don't want to be a, the judge of how valuable my work is for anybody i'm you know if you call my job a bullshit job you go right ahead okay but uh, but i still believe there are jobs that really contribute very little maybe including my own and there are those jobs that are absolutely essential for a society And I think we we're getting it wrong all the time. Uh, the people that make the most money in our societies are not really the ones that contribute. Uh, very often, it's quite the opposite. So, in in that sense, I think this is this is there's an opportunity in that, and that's very well spotted, Claudia. Very well spotted. That's uh, absolutely, absolutely. But I also spot think on. like all the artists, you know, like um, there are there are so many people who who think they they can they can live without the art or without going to th cinemas or to theaters or to concerts because they think it's all not necessary but um they're all getting the hang of it that that's like that it's that that you need it for socializing you know it's it's not it's not only that you that you can sit at home and watch movies um that still or that already exists but you kind of at at one point know that there are artists behind it that made that possible and that make you still live your part and not 
completely driving insane during all the lockdowns. So I think those and the social um, workers or social working people, they definitely need um, um, to to get heard and, and get to be pushed so they can mm -hmm. at least earn a little bit more money and um, get over s situations like this in the next time. Yeah. I also, this just brings one um, one example to mind uh, because I've been reading uh, Utopia for Realists uh, lately by uh, Radka Bregman, uh, a mm -hmm. Dutch author, quite quite well known right now. You might have seen him at the oh, Davos. I, I didn't. The, the, uh, the Davos really uh, Summit, the Davos. Sorry, in 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 English, the Davos Summit uh, two years ago, um, where he was at a podium discussion and he said. It's very interesting that all these wealthy people are here and they're talking about philanthropic ideas about better education for everybody and all these programs and incentives. Um, but for more equality in the world, it's a very simple solution and it's about taxation. And, uh, and then he said, and now he's been here for three days and he feels that he's, it feels almost to him like he's come to a conference of firemen and he, they're not allowed to talk about water. You know, <laughs> so, um, he didn't get the best uh, response from the crowds, apparently, he said. But um, but uh, anyway, you can think of that what you will. That was just uh, this is how I have uh, heard of him the first time. And I think this is where he really on a on a public level appeared uh, quite strongly for the first time. So just to uh, have people maybe recognize, place him a little better. Uh, and a great book. Uh, and it's, uh, he gives this example also. He talks about uh, social jobs, about the, he actually talks, talks about bullshit jobs as well and the ones <laughs> that are okay. relevant, uh, for society and important. And, uh, and he said, he gives this example of, of the New York, uh, garbage collectors, the, the, yeah, the garbage for, yeah. I'm sure there's a better word. I can't think of it right now, but, uh, but the garbage collectors and there was in the seventies, there was like a big, debate about the labor union and they didn't want to increase the wages because they said pretty much new york said they're not they're not really worth it uh you know this is too much they didn't want to increase their wages at all and then in the end they were actually not allowed to strike because of you know the status of their job but then they did it anyway and they did that for a day the garbage started collecting on the streets and uh Panic started to set in slowly, but they were still adamant. It's like, this will blow over. It'll be fine. Seven days later, New York was literally suffocating in its own garbage and shit. And this is when they realized, wow, we, we cannot do this any longer. There are, there are this important to the city. We need yeah. them more than yeah. anything else, more than Wall Street or anything. Because if they don't do their job, we are literally, literally suffocating in our own shit. And then they yeah. got the increase of wages that they wanted. And to this day, the garbage collectors in New York are highly esteemed and they're considered uh, heroes of the city. So yeah. just this example to show that There, there is more to making money. There is more to making the highest profits, obviously. I know I'm stating the obvious, but unfortunately, this is what you're saying. This doesn't always, uh, it isn't always being translated to wages and all of that. And hopefully, uh, this pandemic is uh, allowing us to take a close look at what we consider important and whatnot. Um, and this is now my really my last question to you. Yeah. Um, because I saw on Facebook uh, that you have done this amazing, uh, beautiful, regular posting spree for 10 days, pretty much, where you posted uh, your favorite albums, the most influential <laughs> music yeah. albums, without words, without explanations, just the cover of the album, and you put it out there. And it's like a journey through your own musical, personal musical history in a way. Yeah. Obviously, I was <laughs> alongside you, of that. Of a, a lot of the time. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that, but I recognize a lot of the albums, obviously. And, yeah. and beautiful choices, by the way. Great work. Beautiful Thanks. curation. I'm so proud. I so didn't proud. finish it, I think. I just got seven albums and I didn't really finish the whole ten. Well, then you should finish it because so far it's been amazing. Okay. Uh, I enjoyed looking at that. Yeah. And, uh, and now having seen that, I would like to ask you right now, what are you listening to right now? What is your, is there anything in particular you're listening to right now? A song that everybody should 
uh, download, buy, get, stream, whatever they're doing with music these days, the young kids. So uh, what, what, what are you listening to right now? Actually, I'm, 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 I'm going back to old stuff at the moment. <laughs> um, Nothing um, wrong with that. No, I know it's 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 all good, but um, the, the, I I kind of like the whole um, funky stuff at the moment, and um, I, what I what I listened to yesterday, what I really liked and um, reminded me of that I heard it before was Supergrass. Um, it's oh yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, I kind of, yeah. There's especially this one song. What's it called? Uh, I just love it. Uh, what's it called now? The, this really, the super rock anthem that they wrote. Uh, what is something with the roads, streets? Ah, uh, come on, come on! I'm yeah, having a blank um, here. Give me, give me a second. I'm gonna Google it. I have to, I have to know. I have to know. Super grass. Um, there we go. Um. Great. Now it's not in the top. Uh, yeah. I'm, uh, <laughs> I, was, I, was I mean, they did so many good ones. So many good ones. Uh, but this is the one that always comes to mind. Uh, I don't find it. But I, I got Mary and I like Mary a lot. That's also a great song. Ah, Road to Ruin. That's it. Yeah. Road to Ruin. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Here we go. It just rocks. <laughs> yes. All right, boys and girls. This is something you can listen to uh, tonight. Uh, right after this. Great song, Road to Ruin, Supergrass. Um, great band. Great band. Great albums. You know. Oldies but goldies. Oh my god, that sounds so wrong. <laughs> it's, it's not that old. I mean, it's not the Beatles or anything, but it's been around for some time. But it's just still so much fun listening to it. Cloudy, that's amazing input. I think uh, that's a great song also to let the yellow van roll out uh, a little bit on the final stretch. Thank you so so much for being with me today. It was such a fun ride as always. I enjoyed it very much. I enjoyed it very much. And you know what the best thing about uh, this farewell is today is that I will see you in a couple of days. Yeah. And that makes me absolutely, ex absolutely in excited, enthusiastic, and just happy and joyful to just be able to say that. Because I love yeah. you very much. And it's always such a pleasure seeing you and having you around. Um, I love you and, also very much. Yeah. And so it was we speak very soon. nice um, talking to you or, or being on your podcast as well. Absolutely. Enjoyed it Great very much. privilege. Great privilege yes. for me to have you. If we ever need another one um fitting in You're available. for yes. <laughs> <laughs> we can we can do that again for I don't know, maybe just an Excellent. hour or something. Excellent. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll just be my you'll just be my joker now, right? Yes. It's like uh, excellent. That's great. You know, that's so yeah. valuable. You have no idea. Yeah. That's like, that's probably one of the most valuable positions you could hold. Yeah, sometimes. So you know, uh, thank yeah. you very much for that. You're welcome. That's wonderful. <laughs> so with that, let's let's roll out with uh, Supergrass and the Road to Ruin. All right? Okay. Love you. I love Thanks you Thanks very much. Bye. Bye. <laughs> and with this, we're coming to the end of this week's trip in the Yellow Van. All information about Cloudy and her extraordinary work will be provided in the show notes along with all relevant links to today's conversation. Thank you all very much for coming along in the Yellow Van today. We hope you enjoyed your time on the road with us. We sure enjoyed our time with you. If you feel I missed some essential questions or follow-ups, like I'm sure I did, send them to us and we will have them answered for you. If you have your own inspiring story to tell or you know somebody who does, Get in touch with us on yellowvanstories.com, where you can also leave us your general feedback or ideas for improvements. The hashtags for the show, learning on the job, and stronger together are no coincidence. If you want to support Fonzie with a bit of petrol money, you can do so on buymeacoffee.com forward slash yellowvan. Or you can leave us a review on our website or the podcast platform of your choice. This podcast is a Mind the Bump production. We hope to welcome you back next week for a brand new episode. 
will be keeping your seat and will be cooling that imaginary drink of your choice. Please note, a selection of teas and instant coffee is available as well. Some of you, after all, might just be starting your day depending on what side of the planet you are on. Until then, stay healthy, keep loving, and always remember, we're all in this together. Take it away, Jim. You're right.